Um, hi, everyone. I'm Abhi Maiti from MD Anderson Cancer Center here with Dr. Jorge Cortez from the Georgia Cancer Center. And we just wrapped up a discussion on practice changing topics in leukemia at ASH this year for this session in uh, advances in oncology. So, Dr. Cortez, I was listening to your talk earlier, and then you touched upon the targeted therapy combinations in AML, uh, including IDH, FIT3, and MENIN. I was curious to know um, which are the combinations you are most excited about and with which patient populations? Gee, I mean, all the combinations are very exciting. Um, the, the combinations with FLE3 inhibitors are particularly exciting. One, because we probably have, we've used, been using them for the longest, uh, because that's a population with a very poor prognosis, and because we've seen the impact of adding FLE3 inhibitors to, at least in the frontline setting, with 3 plus 7. Um, but I'm also excited in, in terms of what is the best way to, to do them um, and what about combinations with Azaven. We, we've seen one, one unfortunate experience with gilteritinib and azacitabine in a study that was, in my opinion, surprisingly negative. I, I was expecting it to be positive. But now we're starting to see the combinations with Azaven and guilt and, and wizard and even and others. That to me is is very exciting because um, not only because of the pre three patients and not only because of the on pre patients, but in the context of what we saw in this meeting on on, on the potential for even ASAVM for even younger patients, you know, where where does that fit? Um, we want to see more data. We want to see randomized studies. Um, but 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 I think that that's that's a an exciting area that's that's opening up, and it it could transform a, a formerly very poor prognosis disease into one that's uh, much better. And you know, sometimes, as we've seen, for example, in pH positive ALL, when you have the right treatment, it, it can convert completely into a almost favorable setting. So you know, hopefully, we're getting there. Um, the the many Combinations are exciting because the many inhibitors themselves are very attractive, um, but we need combinations. We, we're not going to use them by themselves uh, eventually. Um, so, so seeing all the data on, on the combinations with A7, with three plus seven, the fracture relapse front line, the different types of the different molecules that are emerging, um, that's also very very exciting. And you know, we'll have to learn what's a what's a uh, actual benefit and the proper place and and the the role of each one of the inhibitors. So so all of that is very interesting. That that's very super helpful. So to touch upon the many inhibitor combinations, uh, with the data coming out in NPM one and KMT two A, and and particularly the safety with the triplets that we're seeing, uh, how far do you think we are from truly incorporating the many inhibitor triplets in the frontline setting in 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 NPM1 and KMT2A, and how do you think we move forward with the toxicities we're seeing? Um, I think it's probably going to be a little bit different for the KMT2A and the NPM1. And, and the reason is because KMT2A rearrangements are a poor prognosis. So there's a lot of improvement to be made there, a lot of, of potential benefit um in in that in that context so and and probably even a little bit easier to demonstrate the benefit because you're starting from a lower point um and these drugs work you know many of is, is even approved for that for that indication so i think that it probably won't take too long to to see that combination um or those combinations both with 3 plus 7 and with ace of n to get to make it to the front line with many uh, with with NPM one, maybe it's a little bit different, a little bit more challenging because NPM one mutation is is not bad actually by itself. If it's the only mutation, if it's not in the context of free three, is 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 a good prognosis. So it'll be a, an interesting scenario. Where, how do you incorporate that? Uh, you still can improve the outcomes. You know, a good prognosis doesn't mean that everybody is cured. So you can improve the outcome. Um, but but to demonstrate the benefit is going to be a little bit more challenging. It's going to need you know more comparative studies, longer follow up, probably larger populations, etc. So I think that to truly get them into 
be standard of care. I think they will be standard of care, but to prove it, to, to make it a definitive, it probably is going to take a little bit longer. So th that, that's very helpful, Dr. Cortez. So if I can follow up on that for NPM1, with the toxicity we are seeing, how do you think we can make it safer? The triplets up for frontline NPM1, is there a way we can make it safer? Uh, yes, that I, I, well, um, the differentiation syndrome, it looks like in the studies, in the combination trials, the differentiation syndrome is mitigated. It, it's not as much. Um, which is important, number one. Number two, usually during induction, you're going to have the patients in the hospital. You're going to be you know, keeping a close eye. We should be keeping a close eye. And that's probably going to be helping us make it safer and, and more manageable for patients without you know, undue risks. Um, but, but certainly, especially for patients with good prognosis, again, NPM1 are a little bit different than KMT2A. Um, that that's going to be an important consideration. What's the benefit compared to any additional risks that we see? But I think that the, with the combinations, and you know, I've had some experience with these trials, with the uh, particularly with the Siftomani, um the the, com the, the common uh, uh, studies, um, we we found them, you know, relatively, you know, fairly manageable. So I. I think that we will be able to do that in that context. Wonderful. Thank you, Dr. Cortez. Those are great insights. We'll wrap up here and we'll see you later.